I don't believe in giving to takers because it sucks you out of your system. So you have to be able to trust the other person enough to be able to cross that line. And you have to be able to know yourself. I mean, how far do I go beyond my practice to do that or within my practice? Or how much energy do I have? I was just telling Jan that I canceled, actually canceled two events this week of the book, book tour because I picked up another one in Las Vegas next week. And you know what? I just don't want to do them because I need to self-preservation. I want to be able to sit and relax and save myself because I'm getting burnt out a little bit, even though I have um, uh, 19 more stops to go. <laughs> so uh, between now, shoot me, between now and the end of the year. But I love it. Don't get me wrong. I just need a little pick-me-up. I need to plug into a wall. You know what I mean? And so, you know, that, that's a matter of me saying to myself, okay, I'm not going to do this because I need to save myself. You have to know yourself and know that other person. And I think then, then you can realize for yourself what does it mean to give? What does it mean to take? What does it mean to be a responsible community person? What does exchange mean? Who am I as an artist and how do I contribute to community? I, I have to tell everyone that before we started this conversation, Sharon leaned over and she said, how can I help you? That was the first, that was the first thing. I say that a lot. Yes, so <laughs> how can I help you? There's, and, and, and I think Maybe this would be a good point to see whether or not you have some questions that you'd like to ask of Sharon, some things you'd like to talk about, maybe some issues you've been up against. So um, I'd be happy to like, pass the mic to someone. What do you think of jury? Sharon? Oh, that's a good question. I don't believe in pay to play, so I don't believe in that. I do think that early in one's career, and it doesn't matter what age you are either, it's just where you're starting as an artist. It may be good to do that as far as the just beginning, one or two, but choose your jurors carefully. Do your homework to figure out who the person is looking at your work and somebody you want to have a dialogue with, just like anybody else in the world. I think a big thing that artists need to do for themselves is research. You need to figure out for yourself uh, who is my audience? You need to set up goals for yourself to drive the car that you want to, you're a vehicle for your work. You're the maker, you're the critic, you're the objective person, you're taking the journey. So you have a lot of options. And so to know where you're going and who, who the audience is that you want to receive your work, then, and not on the, sure, museums, galleries, but who are they? There's usually people behind those places. So be, I would be careful about that. Who has other questions? And that can read from the book too, because I have this really funny thing I love to read all the time. I have kind of a practical question. Is that all right? Yes, yes I love it. <laughs> Keep it going. So, you know, I'm at a point where I feel like I've uh, um, had a little bit of a track record going, and I feel like the next step for me is sort of um, being more engaged in a certain way. And yet what I find is that I really need a lot of solitude. I really need to plug in and recharge my batteries. And that um, also, I don't know about you guys, but I don't like being, I mean, part of the reason I'm a digital artist is I'm not a performer. I like to do my thing by myself in private and then maybe share it with people. So I had the experience, had been to two residencies. One was me basically alone in the woods by myself for three weeks, and I loved it. Which and I learned a lot about myself. What was that? The Morris Graves Foundation residency. Does everybody know what that is? Now, if you don't know what it is, here's a good practice. I teach professional development, so I got this hat on right now, because you're asking yeah. something practical. Everybody should write that down, because she just did research for you. Why aren't you writing it down? It's just a normal practice. I do this every day. And then I go home and look it up, and I say, oh, she did this, maybe I can do it. And then I apply for it, and then I go forward. That's, that's what I have. So, so go ahead. I'm a maniac, though. I'm a total maniac, but that's how I'm able to make a living. <laughs> so you went into the woods, and then you, did you like it, going in the woods? Yeah, I mean, this place 
is magical. Um, and I don't want to say too much about it because I need you guys need to do your own work. But you know, but the, it's basically they invite six artists a year to come one at a time. Okay, well, congratulations. Mm. Yeah, and it was just right for me. Then another thing I got though was a residency where it was. Um, a, a lot of people working in kind of like a shared studio space, and I found that I just froze. I got like deer in the headlights. So is your question that you know yourself as a private person, yeah. but you need to be more engaged in order to go forward, like being here in this group of people, this must be traumatic for you, that you're able to sit in this group of so many people. It's not traumatic, but I, I'm just saying as an example, I think that, no, I'm not, I, I mean it. I mean, not that must be drawn. I'm me. happy you look great, though. You're doing well. But, so are you saying how to be engaged? Are you involved at all in social media? A little bit, but like I, she said on your resume that you did a residency at Tamarind. Yeah. So this is something I dream about doing, but I realize that I might get there and freeze up again. And, and it happened once, and now I'm afraid to even apply to go to a residency where I feel like like this residency, people were well intentioned, but they were like, "We're so glad you're here. We can't wait to see what you do." <laughs> and I just, I just. Well, okay. So can I? I'll say this. First of all, if you had a different mentality, like if you, if it wasn't so personally vested, what I mean by that is, of course, our work is very dear and personal to us. But it sounds like this has a lot more to do with you than your work. Yeah. I Okay, so which means that, you know, not, I, I'm not trying to be a, a therapist, I'm being serious about this, is that if you are serious about your work and know where you want to drive it, what's good for your work, getting that goal list together where you can see that uh, whatever context in which it should live and breathe and grow, you will then have the confidence to then find that happy medium in order to sustain that uncomfortability. First of all, I think it's very good for an artist to always be uncomfortable to a degree because that's where those ideas come forward. But you're obviously here, so you can manage it. So I would say that find something that of a happy medium that's going to be good for your work, but also you're able to get over that to a degree to be able to enable it to go forward. The other thing is when I mentioned social media is you can hide behind that computer screen. You well, what does that mean? I don't understand. Why are you yeah. And then I, I mean, just an option, you don't have to do it. Right. But in so in what ways do you find I mean, you just yourself? click on it and, and put it on Instagram. You don't have to say a word. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can take photographs. You can have a presence in a way that um, has, uh, uh, that some people are following you and then they go to your website. Or do you have a See, website? Yeah, but all that PR stuff. It's not PR stuff, it's about communication. It's not just PR. PR makes it sound like it's external. PR is actually um, cr uh, critical uh, conversation in third party. This is all. Why is it PR? Well, I don't think that engaging in social media is the making of the work. I guess my question was more of like how does one participate in these parts of the art world that seem to be very important for one's. Um, you know, growth and being sort of... Well, what is, what do you think that's a good thing? What do you think is important for one's growth? What do you think... Well, you, I mean, what I do think, think people say? I'm a painter and I think it's really good if you get invited to Tamarind or Crown Point or something like that to make prints. Okay, but I applied for that. I set okay. my slides to do that. So, I think the way to engage is that apply for things like you know how to do, which is great, mm -hmm. to be able to... Um, based on your goals and the context in which you want your work to be in, so and then to try to carry it through as best as you can um, in getting over, be, having that mindset, I'm the maker for this, I can put my work forward, I'm a professional, and carrying it through and have faith and know that that's good for you or else you wouldn't have applied in the first place. And then I would say that um, as far as uh, the other aspects of the art world, some people think of going to openings is really important. I think it's really important to uh, be there for your friends. And I think if you haven't been out in the art world that much, it is important to have a face. If you think about it, look at all these pieces in this room and like Jan's work in the back. Jan made that work, but she's not going to be here every day to talk about her work, right? That her work has evolved from her, right? Your work has evolved from you. 
And so you're, are, you're having a dialogue with another individual without you being there through your work. It's a social atmosphere at the end of the day. It's totally social. Did I, did I help you with that? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're getting at it. It's a little, I think it's a little more, um, maybe it's not, it's a little different, but I, I appreciate everything you're saying, and I think you're absolutely right. And um, I think I can go out and do the social things. I think what, for me, this, this question was specifically about the creative process under, once people start paying attention to what you're doing, um, that how does that affect you as an artist when, well, when you're actually making the work, right? I, Do you know? I, I think this is a little bit like performance anxiety. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it's one thing to draw in the studio, and it's another to be in a group in front of a model and everyone sees what you're doing, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of people have performance anxiety, even if they're, you know, beautiful drafts. And, and they, you know, they have no problem with drawing from the model. So I think that's that's what's at hand because because I know Laura and I've seen Laura in many social settings and know that she's gracious and, and lively and has no problem talking to people even if she's never met them before. So I I, I think it's really you know the the work and I, I understand that. Then. Yeah. I, that's exactly what I was saying. I think you need to separate yourself a little bit okay. and just know that you're the maker of the work and. If you want the work to live outside of you, you can stand right next to it. You're going to have to be a professional to a degree to accept that. And if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. 